Hello and welcome to the introduction video for a series of videos that I'm going to be putting out um, which will cover each of the actuators for the Blender game engine in depth. So I'm going to cover all of the uh, buttons and settings for all of the actuators both on the logic brick and in Python. So this video is just going to go over the basic settings that all of the actuators have. That way I don't need to go over it again in every single video. A couple things to note. One, I'm going to be using the game logic layout. So in the sort of top left here, you can choose the layout. I'm going to be using game logic. Um, and I modify it just a little bit by stretching out this bottom right window to line up with this vertical bar. And I stretch out this property window to line up with this vertical bar. Okay, so I'm going to be using the visibility actuator, but like I said, the settings that I'm going to cover are going to apply for all of the actuators. So starting at the left side, we have this drop down arrow, and that just simply minimizes the logic brick so that we can uh, keep the logic bricks looking nice and neat. Next to that, we have the type of the actuator, so you can just click on that and choose the type of the actuator that you want. Next to that we have the name, so we can name our actuator something meaningful. Um, so thing one is not a very good example of a good name. Next to that we have this little pin, this push pin, and this makes it so that the actuator is visible in a state that it's not being used in. So on our controllers, you can show the states by hitting this little plus button. And if I go to one of the other states by just clicking on one of those boxes, uh, you'll see currently only thing two is shown. That's because it's not connected to any sensors. So really quickly, I'm just going to delete that. If we go back to our first state, you see we have our thing one actuator. Go to one of the other states and it's not there anymore. Well, if we click on the push pin so that it looks like that, whenever we go to one of the other states, we'll see the actuator stays there. So next to that push pin, we have this little checkbox, and this changes whether the actuator will actually run or not. So for example, I have this visibility actuator. I have it set to not visible, and I have that wired into a delay sensor uh, that is set to 60 frames. So if I go over the 3D window and I hit P to play the game, you'll see after 60 frames the main cube disappears. Well, if I click this checkbox so that it's no longer checked, that means the actuator is no longer active so it will not activate. So now whenever I play the game, after 60 frames the cube is still there. All right, so now we're going to move over into Python to see some of the attributes that all of the actuators have. Okay, so here we are in Python. Um, I do have a few things here from the visibility actuator, but we're not going to be covering those. Um, one thing that you'll need in all of your scripts is the from BGE, from BGE import logic line. And there are two ways you can get the actuators um, in Python. I'm going to strongly suggest that you do it through the second method, the get actuators through the controller reference, um, as opposed to the object reference, uh, just because it works better and you can, it's, it's more understandable and because we'll end up using the controller to activate the actuators later. So you can just pause the video to look at how you can get the references. I'm going to go over the controller way. So first you need to get the controller. You can do that by calling logic.getCurrentController. That's fairly standard. Uh, then we can get a list of all of the actuators that are attached to that controller by doing controller.actuators. We then have two ways that we can actually get the actuator itself. So here I've got two variables, one named thing1, the other named thing2. Uh, the first one you can see I'm assigning it by doing actuators sub 
thing one. So we can get it by the name of the actuator. So you can see there I put in the string thing one and that corresponds to the name on the actuator itself. We can also get it by index. So you can see thing two I'm getting by index of one. So the actuator's index is the same as it appears uh, attached to the controller. So you can see thing one is going to be index zero. If I add another actuator, um, let's just make it another visibility actuator, and I wire that into the same controller, now this actuator is going to be uh, index one because the indexes start at zero. So this is index zero, this is index one, the next one would be uh, two and so on and so forth. Okay, so then we get down into the attributes that all of the actuators have. There's three of them. We have owner, name, and execute priority. So owner returns a game object that the actuator is attached to. So in our case, we have the thing one actuator and that's attached to the object cube. So in this case, our script would return a reference to our cube object. We then have dot name, and that just simply returns a string, which is the name of the actuator. So here we're doing thing two dot name. So that means that it would return the name of the second actuator. In this case, it would return visibility. Um, but if I would change this name to like thing two, now it would return the string thing two. Okay, and finally we have execute priority. So this changes what order the actuators um, are executed in. So for instance, I have two actuators here. If thing one has an execute priority of zero, and thing two has an execute priority of one, that means thing one is going to be executed before thing two. And if I have thing one at an executed priority of one and thing two at an execute priority of zero, that means thing two would run first and then thing one would run last. So execute priority, the actuator with the lowest number runs first. And this will default to one. So for instance, I have thing one dot execute priority equals zero. So you can set or read this. Um, so here I am setting it to zero. That means that the thing one actuator will run before the thing two actuator. And like the other attributes, you can read this one in. So you can assign it to a variable and this one will return a integer representing the execute priority. And one last thing that we have to note for all of the actuators is that in Python, uh, we need to activate the actuators and then we also need to deactivate them. Um, so this is actually a function of the controller, which we got up here by doing the logic .get current controller, So we're gonna call controller.activate and then we're gonna feed in um, either a reference to the actuator itself um, or you can also feed in a string which is the name of the actuator. So we can activate them and that's all well and good. The problem is if we just call activate then the actuators are going to stay activated until we call the deactivate method or until they're deactivated outside of this script. So here we just call controller.deactivate and this is the same as the activate method. You can either feed it a reference to the actuator or you can feed it a string with the name of the actuator. Okay, so those are the basic attributes that all of the actuators are going to have. So in the following video series, I'm gonna go in depth at the specific attributes for 
each individual actuator. So I look forward to seeing you in those other videos. I hope you have enjoyed this one. I hope it helps you out. And other than that, I just want to thank you guys very much for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.